Hello everyone. Welcome to DevTurbo Fest 2023. I'm Shilpa Shankar, Developer Advocate at SAP. This is week three of low code, no code sessions. And I hope you enjoyed the previous session and took part in the contest. The topic for today's session is collaborate to build S4 HANA extensions using SAP Build with CAP and RAP. Before we begin, I want to remind our attendees to join the DevTurbo Fest group in the SAP community so that you can participate in the contest and be able to qualify for a grand prize, which is an all expense pay trip to SAP's Newport Beach office in California. So a link to the DevTurbo Fest group is in the description and we'll also add it in the chat as well. I would now like to invite our speakers Burak Demir and Sayer Ijazuddin from SAP to introduce themselves and start today's session. Welcome, Burak and Sayer, to the session. Thank you, Shilpa, for the introduction. My name is Sayed Ijazuddin, and I work with a team in SAP called Into Int Validation and Technical Advisory. So we are here going to explain collaborate to build S4 extension using SAP Build with Cap and Wrap. And here, the Burak will going to give the introduction, and then we will going to proceed with the content. Thank you, Sayed. So hello, everyone. My name is Burak. I am working as a product manager for SAP Build Apps. Uh, I'm also a citizen developer here. And today, uh, it's going to be my first time for the DevToberfest session. So hopefully, you will like what we will share together with my colleague uh, that you can, you know, build your extension with SAP Build with Cap and Wrap. So let's get it started. Before we show you what we have done with SAP Build apps and uh, Cap and Wrap, uh, I would like to talk a little bit about our SAP Build portfolio. So in SAP Build, we have three SAP Build products. SAP Build apps to create your products. Uh, to create your applications without any code, SAP Build Process Automation to create your processes, to create your business processes and automate them. And of course, SAP Build Workzone to design your business website again without any code and also deploy your applications also in you, uh, that you create in SAP Build apps. So this is our SAP Build portfolio with three SAP, uh, different SAP Build products. And let's also see uh, where this is located. So in the center, we have the cloud ERP, and of course we have the SAP business technology platform, uh, which we call as SAP BTP. And here, as you can see that this is highlighted as application development and automation there. So this is where SAP build portfolio runs. So basically all of our SAP build products run on top of SAP BTP, which comes with two main advantages. First is the security, all of the features that all of the SAP build products have uh, you know, security compliant. And on the other hand, the second advantage is the integration. So basically, if you would like to integrate with your existing SAP system, the SAP build apps, then you will not have any problem there since we have the seamless integration. Of course, you can also integrate with your non-SAP systems, but since this run on top of SAP BTP, this is also one of the main advantages there. All right, I think enough introduction and let's uh, go to our story. So first, let's meet with Susan and Alex. So we have Susan here. Uh, Susan is a medical technician at SBA Medical Clinic, and her main tasks are laboratory testing and calibrating the laboratory equipment. And on the other hand, we have Alex. Alex is a service manager at Health Tech Devices, and his uh, main responsibilities are you know, managing the daily operation in the service, and of course, also the staff allocation for the each open incidents. So basically, this is very famous, but on the other hand, a complex scenario. So Susan is only one of the customers of the health tech devices that I, I, Alex was working there. And Susan sometimes, you know, have some, has some problem regarding some of the medical devices. And when she has some problem, she needs to open some incidents, create some incidents there so that Alex and uh, Alex colleagues can uh, take care of those open incidents. But this process is not easy. They can sometimes send some emails. They can some, sometimes make some phone calls, but it's not easy to manage, especially for Alex. So today we created two SAP build application for this use case. SAP, uh, service Hub and Service Hub Admin. So in the Service Hub, 
This is the application for all of the customers like Susan, so that they can go and create an incident with device name, issue description, and also they can get some notifications once their open incidents are updated. And on the other hand, we have the service hub admin where Alex can go and or other service managers can go and you know monitor, check all incidents, of course, update the priorities, and of course, assign some uh, responsible for person for the each incident so that hopefully uh, those responsible processors can go and fix the problem that, for example, Susan has for this use case. So let's also talk about some architectural part. So today we created a cap service in Cloud Foundry and use this cap service and created a BTP destinations here. In this cap service, we are storing all of the open incidents also in progress and close incidents. So basically all of the incidents from customers that we have in one place, and we are storing this in the cap service. And using the BTP destination, this is available for us. And whenever the status of the incident changes, then we trigger an email process in the build process automation from CAP so that the incident owner, for example, Susan, can go and check uh, what's going on with, with the incident. And on the other hand, we are also using RAP because in the SAP S4 HANA Cloud, we have some business partner details uh, you know, that are our responsible persons uh, working in the service management company. So those persons are already in the S4 HANA cloud. So using OData connection, we created a wrap service in ABAP environment. And at the end, we also put this wrap service into the BTP destination. And then we go to SAP Build Apps, create two applications, Service Hub and Service Hub Admin. First application, Service Hub for Susan, uh, this application is using OData connection to consume this cloud fund, uh, to consume this cap service from BTP destinations. And the second application for Alex, Service Hub Admin, use both all data and REST API integrations through BTP destinations to consume cap and wrap services that we already created. So after we created all those two, you know, two projects in SAP Build Apps, we built those projects and deploy in SAP Build Workzone. Once we deploy this, projects into work zone, we did some access management there so that using SAP Mobile Star, we can also use this application from a mobile devices so that Alex and Susan can go to SAP Mobile Star and start using this application. And after this point, we also would like to highlight this one. So we are not posting another data back to the S4 HANA cloud, but we could also do that. And there are actually more than one ways to do this. So for example, from CAP, from RAP, and also from uh, boot process automation, we can also create some incidents in the S4 HANA cloud. But for this demo today, we are creating those incidents only in CAP services using PTP destination via all data connection. So now I think it's time for me to share my mobile devices screen so that we can go and check the application, how it looks like. So I will quickly share my mobile device screen and go to mobile start. So all right. Yes. So here we have the SAP start. You can see that on the last part of the screen. I go to SAP start. And after the face ID, I can see two applications. It's a service hub client and service hub admin, right? So for Susan, Susan can go to Service Hub Client and start using this application. So let's go. OK, so my application is loaded now. This is the Service Hub for Susan, right? So now let's go and create a new incident because we have a problem. All right, so the title will be, let's say, Infusion Pump is not working all right this is my title of the incident and i will i can select the priority like low medium or high i think it's a medium prior ticket okay and here i have a drop down device so i have different devices here loaded from the service management 
and they are all coming from cap services. Uh, so I need to, yeah, find the infusion pump here. There we go, infusion pump. And then I go to company. I can just say that it's Medvita Clinics. It's my company for today. And then I need an issue description. For example, infusion pump is providing inconsistent readings. All right. OK, I think it's enough for this issue description. Now I click on create an new incident. So when I push this button, I wait a bit. And then I got the notification that you have successfully created a new incident. So when I click on OK, then you can see that right now my page is reloaded. And I can see that there is no information available from the last uh, open incident. So since I clicked twice, Seems like I created two new incidents there because of the network issues I think I have today. So we created the incident. Now, Alex will go and check those incidents and manage those and assign those to the responsible people. So it's time to go to Service Hub Admin. I click on Service Hub Admin. And this is my homepage. And now I have three options to go to open incidents, in progress incidents, and close incidents. Let's now first go to the open incidents, all right, and check if the incident that we just created is here. And you can see that I have a color coding here. So based on the priority of the tickets, we have different coloring, right? We have three different color here. So here you can see that infusion pump is not working from Medvita clinics. So this is my ticket, uh, this is my incident, and I can also filter, you can see that both of those incidents are here. And I can also filter based on the ID. This is also possible because each ticket, uh, each open incidents gets a new ID here, a unique ID here. So let's go to the first one, all right? And now it's time to check some details because Alex wants to know those details. Infusion pump is not the pump is not working. Priority is medium. Status of this incident is open now. We have the device code. Maybe you can remember that I just select the infusion pump from the drop down menu. But since I have in my cap service infusion pump and also the device name and device code, I am assigning the device code after the user selection. That's why Alex can easily see the device code here. I think this is also a very cool feature for Alex. And I have the date. I didn't put this date as an end user, but this date was time stamped uh, automatically from the system. So that's why I have this date. And we have the customer, Medvita Clinics, customer email. Again, I didn't put this uh, email, but since I was an authenticated user, my authenticated user email was already in the system as a system variable so that I was you know, using this variable and posting this to the cap service uh, in the incident table. All right, so we have the issue description, perfect. And now it's time to assign a processor. And those processors' names are coming from my S4 HANA cloud system. All, those are my you know, uh, colleagues that are working in the service company. And I would like to say, okay, I think Daniel can take this job. That's why I select Daniel from the dropdown. And if I want, so I can see that the priority is medium, but I can also update this priority here. Uh, but I think it's fine. So I will not do anything there. And then I will click on set status in progress. Or if I want to directly close this ticket, I can also close this ticket. I click on set status in progress. And you can see that incident with the following ID is sub successfully updated. Perfect. When I click OK, now I'm redirected back to the home page. Now let's go to the in progress incident to check if that incident is there. So you can see that infusion pump is not working is here and now this time status is in progress. And let's assume that this uh, issue is solved. Now I would like to go and close this incident, all right? So now we have the assigned processor, but in case I need to reassign another processor, then I can also do this because I still have this assigned processor dro uh, drop down field here, but I will not do that. So solution description, let's put a solution description and say that all right, reading device has changed. Set status to close. So now I will click on set status to close button. All right. And now when I click here, 
now I got the feedback that incident with the following ID is updated, right? And I click OK. Now it's the last part. Let's go to closed incident. And here I can see that my closed incident is also here, all right? Now, if I click on here, I can see that status is closed. I can still check the other data. And you can see that I can do uh, nothing else because it's already closed. I can only go back to the uh, closed incidents. Or I can click on the service hub admin logo to go back to the home page. So this was our end-to-end -end demo for Susan and Alex. But now it's time to check the cap and wrap site that Sayed will be explaining us what we did there to make this progress uh, happen. Thank you, Bora, for the demo. And I will going to show uh, that how this cap and wrap is actually talking with the build apps to the BTP destinations. We will also see that we will also going to get the mail from the build process automation and how this build process automation is being integrated with cloud application programming models. So there's a lot of technology. Let's go and check each one by one. So if you see right now that we have an email, an email from the processor and it is saying that, hey, that you have the incident which has been created in the service hub. And right now you can see the email status is closed. Of course, you are going to get all the mail right from the open to the process into the closed status. And you can see you are getting all the detail, who is the processor and who is a, what is the solution description, what is the issue description. And through that, you are going to inform real in real time to the uh, like to the uh, like to the processor as well as to the who is there whoever has created the incident. Now, this is a cloud application programming model, and if you see that we have an incident already, which is in right now. If I just go and refresh, which you can see that we have. Uh, let me just quickly refresh that part. Nice. So you can see there is a lot of incident which has already been created and few are in open status and few are already being closed. And these incidents are already being managed from the build apps and whatever we are doing is automatically get recorded into this uh, read only application, which is only been visible by the admin. Here, admin going to see if, like, if, the, if he doesn't have the build apps from his uh, mobile application, he can anyway can go to this cloud application programming app UI and he can also monitor each and every incident if you go more further you can see that there are a few of the things like let's suppose if you go with few of the uh, close incident let's suppose we have created here we have recently created this incident and we have you have seen that this incident was assigned a medium priority we have the issue descriptions we have the solution descriptions who is the processors and you can't edit it because it's just a read only mode because the admin has just doing all the action from the build apps but how we have created this application? So if you go to the detail of this application, you can see that we have created a cloud application programming model where we have a schema. We have a schema for incident. We have a schema for status values, priority values, and the medical device, which have the code and descriptions. In the build apps, you are also seeing that you are getting medical device code and description, which is basically coming from this CAP services. If I go to this other section of the CAP services, you have a services. And in the services, you can see you have an incident services where you are going to record all the incident. You have a status services. You have a medical device services, which is being integrated with the build apps. And we have also have a priority services. In the custom logic, we have written some few logics that how you're going to integrate build process automation and trigger an email whenever you're going to do some kind of change in the status. So here we have written a code that, hey, that you have a change in the status of incident, then you can definitely go and trigger this as the SPA um, like workflows. And these workflows in, in uh, like in turns will trigger a build process automation API trigger and in turns will trigger an email for you. We have to create a destinations and the destination is created in PTP. Okay. We have also written a few annotations, which you can see here that with this help, orientation we are able to get a very fancy ui which is right now you can see here we have a good criticality where we can monitor close open and in process status we have also a lot of free text which we can definitely use for our purposes 
Now, this uh, CAP services has been exposed, and it, once it has been exposed, you don't need to explicitly write uh, logic for the CRUD operations, and automatically an Audit V4 supports. And once it has been integrated with the build apps, then you can do all kind of read, write, and update operation on the cloud application programming model. Next, come to the uh, wrap part. Why we have integrated the wrap part? Because we don't want to expose precious SAP S4 HANA ERP business partner data directly with the build apps. So we thought, let's how you can integrate with the RESTful Lab App Programming Model. RESTful Lab App Programming Model is a programming model where you can write a lot of development paradigm in a app, and then you can expose in a cloud. So here we are going to show you SAP Business Accelerator Hub, where you can get a lot of APIs in as for SAP S4 HANA, SAP S4 HANA Cloud, and any other ERP system. So for SAP S4 HANA systems, if you go to this API sections, if you go to the OData V2, you can see that you will have a lot of scenarios like business partner, material masters, purchase orders, and you can easily find all the details here. So in this case, let's suppose if I find business partner, you can see you can get the API details. And you can see all the API specifications. You can also get a configuration details. And if you want to, few of the services also support sandbox where you can go and access by the API key. You can also get the authentication method that which authentication method it supports. So you can see that right now it's the basic authentication which is supported. And if you go to the API reference, you can see that you have a lot of metadata like for in creating email address creating business partners you can get all these things and you can definitely do a sandbox trial here as well so whatever the scenario we have created you can easily try it out from the trial landscape and you definitely don't need any productivity landscape just to try out our scenario specifically so if you go here and if i just quickly go to the wrap programming model, I will also want you to highlight, highlight that instead of this consuming this uh, um, uh, remote services, you can also write a lot of logic as well in rest of the app programming model, and you can expose via this OData. You have to write a few CDS um, query, you have to write uh, big data tables, you have to write uh, like a lot of CDS views, like interface views, projection views, then you have to write service bindings, and then you can expose it on OData, which is you can definitely integrate via the build apps as well. So if I come to this part here, you can see that I have written a simple HTTP services exposure in RAP. And here you can see that we have just exposed a simple HTTP services. And then we are consuming our S4 system audit API. And this is, you can see that this API is getting called from the SAP Business API Hub. And you can see the data is from the real SAP S4 HANA cloud system. Once you have written this query, you can definitely go and activate, and then you can create an inbound services. So you can see that you have an uh, actually an STP services, which is an offering from the RAP, and you can get this full fledged services here. But this services is just, and you cannot expose publicly. And to expose this publicly, you have to go and create an inbound services. So you can see that we have created an explicitly inbound services here, which you can also go and see it into the application. So if I come here, and if I go to this communication management and communication arrangement, you can see that you have this communication arrangement, which is being created automatically once you activate the wrap. And this communication arrangement is basically listening to your communication scenarios. And this communication scenarios is available once you activate the wrap services, and then you have to access via some technical user and technical password. So in this case, we have all the configure our technical user, which is wrap underscore dev and the communication password, which in turn, which we are going to configure into BTP destination, which we later going to consume into the build apps. So right now we have the services, okay? We have this API URL, which we definitely go and consume it into the API. So if I come here and directly go to the BTP destination, you can see that we have a wrap services. We have a URL here of the wrap and then you we have a basic authentication, we have a user and we have a password. 
to enable an app giver, uh, because SAP build apps, we have to write this additional property, which is app giver enable, you have to put true. And then once you do that, then it can be visible from the build apps. Similarly, for the cap services, you also have to create a BTP destinations. You have to write a URL. And then to authenticate, you have to use an access UA credential. You have to use OAuth token, and then you have to create a token URL. You have to use user, you have to use password. And then you can also in turn consume into the build apps. Over to you, Bharat. Thank you for this part. So let me quickly share my screen, but this time from my PC. All right. So let me know when you can see that. Yeah. OK, perfect. So welcome to SAP Build Lobby. This is our first entrance point for all three SAP Build products. You can see that we have the build tabs, process automation, and works on part. But Let's go to the projects that we already created for you. So I will first go to the Service Hub client application. So the first application, so it was for Susan, remember? And here, after we click on the project, this is our project file. I can, you know, update this project file and build and redeploy this so that I can, you know, easily release another version of the same application, again, without any code. I think this is the perfect way to version your applications as well. So in this first application, Let's first talk about those data integration points because Syed just mentioned that he created a wrap and cap service there and put those services in the SAP BTP destination. And then we are here as a citizen developer and how we can you know, start using those data. So this application is only using the cap service. So here we will be only checking the cap. So here on the top, we have the authentication tab. If I go here and first remove the authentication and enable it, I can see that you know, we have three different options, Google Firebase, direct third party authentication, and of course, SAP BTP authentication. So basically, after I enable this SAP BTP authentication, I can easily go and start consuming and using my SAP BTP destinations that all of my, you know, colleagues are created for the same sub account. And then here we can create a click on the add integration and go to BTP destinations, and I can easily see all of my destinations that are created for me. And here, we are already using this cap test here. So when I click on the show integration, then I will be able to see four different data entities, all coming from the same cap service. So remember, we have one incident table to store all of our incidents. If I here click on the browse real data, then I can easily see the data from this part as well. And then we have the medical device. I also enabled this one because the reason is if you go and browse the real data, here we have the device code and device description, but I don't want to show the device code to the customers, Susan, because Susan doesn't know the device code, but Alex know the, knows those device codes, right? So basically, Susan will be selecting one of the device descriptions, but in the backend, we will be assigning those codes for the selected device descriptions from Susan so that Alex... Uh, will see those device codes, right? So that's why I enabled those two data entities. And after we enable the data entities, we can go to the UI canvas and switch to variables from top right corner. And here on the left, if you go to data variables, for the each device, uh, for the each data entity I enabled in the previous screen, I can create a data variable here, all right? So once I create a data variable, I can easily match I can easily add another data variable and match those with the data entities that I also enabled in the previous screen. And you can see that I have two data entities, the data variables. So medical device and the incidents grade. So for the medical device, we are getting the collection of the data records. So basically all of the medical device titles from that uh, data entity to show to the customer so that customer Susan can easily select. And in the incident create, we are uh, you know, for the data variable type, we are using new data records so that once Susan fills all of those um, incident information, we can easily create this new incident record into our cap service called uh, incidents uh, data entity. All right. So here, let's come here and check some other points. So for example, here we have the device, right? When user is selecting the device, we are assigning this selected device value into this data variable. And same logic applies for other parts. For example, title was you know an input from the Susan. 
And then here, after we got the input from Susan, then we are assigning this and binding into the incidents create title. If I want to uh, change this, I can easily go there, click and select any other uh, data fields that I want to assign to. This is possible without any code. And then here after that, we have the authenticated user email. We are just showing this email to you so that you know it's possible to uh, retrieve the uh, authenticated user email as a system variable. And how to do this? Well, I first click here and then go to the property section, click on the content, and you can see that it's a simple formula like we are all using in Excel. So authenticated user email will be the system variables current user email. You can see that I have under system variables, I have other information like first name, last name, you know, those are also possible. And you can easily use those uh, data as a system variable so that you don't need to get it from the user every time because your users will be authenticated in the scenario. Okay, so basically we are also filling all of those fields and we are clicking this uh, button, right? So, but if you are completely new for the SAP build apps and you wonder, how to create some UI components. On the left-hand side, we have some UI components that we can just drag and drop to start using it. For example, if you want to use another button, I can just drag and drop a button and I can start configuring this button from right-hand side. I can ch change the label, right? And then I can do some other configurations. I can go and change the style as well. And if I want to remove it, here I have option to remove the UI component. But let's say that your UI components, so the default UI components are not enough for your project. What you can do is you can always go to marketplace and select another component. Let's assume that you have some data to list from your backend system. Then for example, if I type list to search for as a keyword, then I will see that I have many options to list my data from my backend system, which is very cool. And for example, if you want to use this one, you can check that how it looks like. You can just click on the install and it will be here on the install part. And you can just drag and drop to start using it. And of course, it's waiting some data for us to load, right? So we, we need to bind this with the data variable that we uh, created, for example. But this is how we can use another UI components if the default bar ones are not enough, of course. Okay, so this was you know, the overview of the first application. Now let's go to the second application, the admin application. So the one that Alex was using. And now let's see the wrap service data integration point. So again, we are using BTP authentication. You can see that. And I go to data. Maybe remember the architectural slide. We were using the cap and also the other one here, business partner list. So if I click here, I can easily see different options for my backend system. And if I go to list and test, for example, I can just run the test, make another calls here. And at the end, I can see the response. You know, I can just go to schema and then I can also set this schema uh, automatically from the response as well. So this is all that simple. And after you successfully connected your wrap service using the BTP destination, thanks to the BTP uh, authentication, you can again go to variables, create a data variable. You can see that this is my data variable here, for example. So here we have three options, but once we click any of those options, then we are redirecting user to the next page. How to do this? So if I click any of the buttons here, on the blog, I have the logic tab. So if I open my logic tab, you can see that similarly to UI components, we have logic components that we can drag and drop to start using it. Here I have the open page logic component, and I'm just selecting my page, which page to go for. Here I have all of the uh, pages available for this application, and I'm redirecting user to the open incident. And similarly, the other buttons are also configured. So let's go to the open incident, sorry, incident detail page. All right. So here in this page, let's check something together. After we close the incident or set the status in progress, let's open the logic tab and see what we have in behind of this button. So basically, when the component is tapped, I think this is very you know great way for uh, no code programming. What you see is what you get. So here, for example, after the component is tapped, then we are triggering this event and we are updating the record. What which record incident is my record from my cap service? You remember? And here in the incident, we are updating this record based on the ID of the incidents. 
And then we are, you know, providing an alert to the user in this dialogue title. And you can see that incident with the following ID is successfully updated. Then we are using the data variable from incident ID so that we show the incident ID. So this part is dynamic and this part is static, obviously. And then this was the end of this scenario. And maybe I can show you very quick one more screen from the, for example, open incidents part. Okay. So maybe you remember that based on the priority of the incidents, we were using some color coding, but how this is possible. So if I click on any of the UI components and go to here, I have a you know, component template editor. If I click here, then I will be able to see inside of the component what I have. So for example, here I have the component tree and you can see that here I have a label, I have a container, you know, in this container, I have another UI component. So inside one of the components, we can put many component, many UI components so that at the end we have a different UI components. And this is, you know, best way to create your own components, I think. So here you can see that this is my primary label. I can also see here and you, when we go to style, and edit my condition, you will see that I'm using a text coloring here. So basically, if the prior code is L, so low, then we will be using this color code. If it's medium, then we will be using this color code. If else, which means if it's a uh, high prior, then we will be using the last color code. And we can also see the possible results here. I think this formula editor is a great way to write some formulas because here we have the explanation of every formula that you can already use, all right? You can select your variables. For example, if you want to use another formula, for example, if you want to check if it's empty, you will see that we will have a lot of suggestions here, all right? For example, list formulas, math formulas, object formulas, like this. And here we have the suggestion with some examples how to use it. So it's a great way to you know, discover more form formulas. Feel free to check that one as well. So after this color coding, basically, we were at the last page. And after last page, Alex was closing all of those incidents with this button. Uh, set status to closed. And I think with that one, uh, before hand over to Shilpa, Syed, is there anything that you want to add or we are done for today? So I just wanted to highlight that what were the complexity of the scenario which we have told or yeah. what were the services, what are the capress or services or wrap services or the build app or even the build process automation. You can easily tie it from the trial landscape and there is uh, like you can also go and access the backend application of SAP S4 HANA from API Business Hub by the API key. Uh, it's, you don't need uh, at least an SAP S4 HANA real system to at least run this uh, scenario. You can use an API key and then you can also run this whole twin scenario into your trial landscape and then you can see how this matches can be done via these SAP tools. Yeah, that's from my side. Handing over to Shilpa. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Burak and Sayad, for a wonderful and insightful session on SAP Build. Attendance of this session, please note that in order to earn the points and move up in the game board, you may want to complete the tutorial for the session. A link to the tutorial is in the chat as well as in the description below. Thank you all for joining and hope to see you at the next session. Thank you.